I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that the reason you're looking at a smart thermostat is the same reason I bought one, because it's Wi-Fi enabled and you can control your stuff from anywhere and monitor your heating and cooling system from anywhere. I mean, it is really cool and I do like that a lot. I mean, there's no arguing with that. However, something to keep in mind is this. Let's say this is, let's say this is your home network in here, in this area. This is the internet. Ecobee's data center. Now here, let's say we have the, oh, that's a bad uh, example of what the Ecobee looks like, but let's say this is your Ecobee. So this communicates via Wi-Fi to your access point, which is somewhere in your house. It might also be your router, it's probably one thing, and that is connected somehow to the internet, whether it's from your cable company, or your phone company, it doesn't matter. And here, of course, you have Let's say your phone, oh, that's a shitty phone, but let's say your phone or tablet or something. We'll just call it a phone. And of course, that's connected via Wi-Fi. So you want to control your Ecobee from your phone. Let's say you're sitting on the couch and like my Ecobee is upstairs. So I don't want to get up from the couch, walk all the way upstairs just to change one degree and then come back down. So much better, much cooler, much easier to do it with my phone. Well, you would think logically that the data would just go when I sent a command it would go from my phone to my access point, my router, and then to the Ecobee. But that is not what it does at all. What it in fact does is your phone sends a message through your access point router, through the internet, through whatever it goes through on the internet, to an Ecobee server. People call it the cloud. The cloud isn't anything special or weird or crazy. The cloud is just a server somewhere else. Behind me, I mean, that's a cloud. There's some servers there that hold my data that I can access from anywhere. It's my own personal cloud, whatever you want to call it. That's all that this is when they say it's cloud enabled. It just means there's a server in Ecobee's data center or a data center they rent space in. You don't know where this is. That's kind of what the cloud means, just that you don't know or care what this server is or where it is. But you kind of do care because what if that server stops existing? Because your command, let's say to change the temperature in your thermostat, goes from your phone through your internet connection, through the internet to Ecobee's server, which then processes that command and then sends a command back through the internet, through your access point router to the Ecobee. So every time you communicate with the Ecobee, even if you're in the house with it, it's going out over the internet to Ecobee server and then back to your Ecobee. Uh, that's great, fine. I mean, your internet's pretty reliable nowadays. You know, Ecobee servers are apparently pretty good because there's not many complaints about them. So you would assume this will work well. But this relies on Ecobee staying in business or supporting the Ecobee 3 for the next 10, 20 years, however long you would prefer to have a thermostat. I mean, you paid, what, 250 bucks for it? you probably want to keep it for a decent amount of time. And who knows what will happen to this server in that many years. So if this server goes down, if this stops to existing or there's some kind of other problem, then this is pointless, this is pointless, this is pointless, and this is pointless. You lose all communication with your Ecobee. Even if you're standing right next to it, holding your phone in your hand, staring at it. And of course, equally well, you would lose access to it even if you're in the house if your internet connection went down. So if your internet connection goes down in a storm or something, even if you're in your house, you're not going to be able to control your Ecobee from your couch. I mean, there's no reason the Ecobee couldn't act as a web server. But that would rely on people having the knowledge to open up their router for traffic so when they're using their phone somewhere else on the internet, it can go straight to their house. Because right now, if you're using your phone, let's say, just somewhere, and it's connected to the internet, it still has to go through the internet to Ecobee's server and then back through all this crap to your Ecobee. But at least if you could take the Ecobee portion out of it, it wouldn't matter if they went out of business. You would still need the internet to access it remotely, but if the Ecobee acted as its own server, you wouldn't even need the internet to access it from your house. So if your internet was down, you could still sit in your couch and control it. But as it stands right now, you can't. In fact, it gets even more complicated it has to go from the Alexa to your access point to the internet. Then it doesn't go directly to Ecobee. It goes to Amazon. 
And Amazon has a cloud, which is just a server somewhere in Amazon's data center. And that processes the echo command. The Amazon server will pass that information along to the Ecobee server, which will then pass that information through the Internet through the access point back to the Ecobee. If there's any companies out there that really want to grab like the techie side of the market, or people who understand this, which now you do, because I hopefully explained it well enough, um, my advice to any company like that is to uh, put a little web server or some kind of uh, server in your device so that it can be controlled locally without having to go over the internet. And maybe someone already has and I don't realize it and I'm an idiot and I'm talking out my ass. But most thermostats, most smart thermostats will work this way. If this server is slow, if this server is down, you're screwed.